Mason was saddened by the death of his wife and children in a vehicle accident three years ago. They were traveling through the highlands when their automobile skidded off the road and into a roaring river. The authorities were unable to locate the bodies, leaving Mason to weep and lament without closure or resolution. But then a miracle occurred. He noticed them wandering in a park hundreds of kilometers away from their town. Mason couldn't believe what he was seeing. Mason dashed towards them and tightly embraced each of them, yet as he clung to them, his wife began to cry. I have to tell you something. Mason squinted, attempting to figure out who they were. Even though it had been three years since the disaster, he was still quite conscious of how his beloved wife and son looked, and he knew who he was seeing. The question that needs to be answered is how did they get there? Mason was clueless. Were they, in fact, the ones we were looking for? What resulted from Mason's decision to confront those individuals in the end? But before we start, make sure to subscribe if you haven't, and hit that notification bell so that you won't miss any new stories. In a terrible car accident that occurred three years ago, Mason was involved, and as a result, both his wife and his son lost their lives. After the collision, he was knocked unconscious, but a few weeks after he came out of his coma and began to make progress. The news that both his son and his wife had passed away came to him all at once at that point. Since then, he has been a patient at a facility where he is undergoing both mental and physical rehabilitation. He has been there ever since. To regain his ability to walk, he had to put forth an incredible amount of effort. He was taking a leisurely stroll through the park, taking in the sights and sounds of the birds as well as the aroma of the recently cut grass. He eventually reaches the fountain. After that, he looks off into the distance and sees what appears to be a mother and the young son she is walking with. They vanish before he can approach them. He knows nothing about them, but he has a gut feeling. He wasn't mistaken. After exactly one week has passed, Mason resumes his normal routine of going for a walk each and every day. They come face to face with one another once more. Once more, the mother is seen lovingly cradling the hand of the young boy, and Mason can't help but notice the striking similarity between this woman and the boy and his own wife and son. Mason finally breaks his silence to the psychiatrist who is treating him after being readmitted to the mental institution. He is well aware of the fact that he must devise a strategy in order to achieve a more profound comprehension of the mother and the boy. In what way does he intend to accomplish this objective? How could he get closer to them without them getting frightened and running away? He gets an idea, and by the time he gets back to the park the following day, he has a well-thought-out plan for how to put it into action. Mason makes the decision to sit down on one of the park benches and enjoy the scenery. He tries his best to close his eyes and relax, but all that keeps running through his head is his family, his wife, their son. Mason waits patiently. They're getting closer, but Mason is afraid to get any closer. He has no idea what he is seeing. Are these his wife and son? Was it his imagination, or was it his wife and son? One thing was certain, life at the asylum will change radically. Mason's healing is stalling. He no longer goes for his daily stroll since the other day. This means a bodily and emotional relapse. Mason chooses to see his psychiatrist one day. The psychiatrist is willing to let Mason try a trial period with reduced medication doses as long as Mason keeps him updated. Mason resumes his walk in the park after a few days of taking less medicine and feels the difference. But then he notices the woman and boy again. He has no idea what he is seeing. He approaches them, but they appear to be moving in the opposite way. He must follow them. He can't get much closer, so he begins yelling at them. Madam, he says at first. But soon after, when he realizes it's his wife, he cries, Susie, Susie. He walks as quickly as he can down the same path. The closer Mason gets to the woman and her child, the clearer the picture becomes. Mason becomes increasingly aware of how they actually appear, as opposed to how he envisioned them. The woman is having a conversation with Mason right now. She is a joy to be around. The woman wants to know what's going on, and if he needs any help with anything in particular. Mason does not know what to say next. However, despite their striking resemblance, the woman is not actually his wife. As he tries to give a response, he stutters and then he walks away. But as time went on, he came to lament his choice. Mason changes his mind after a few meters and turns around. He notices the woman and the child getting ready to go. They walk past him and he has no idea what to say to them. Excuse me, madam, he says. May I ask you a question? The woman was taken aback by the inquiry that followed. 
Did you have a car accident three years ago? Of course, the woman does not answer at first. She is simply looking at him. Mason then asks his query again. A woman's tear falls down her cheek. She finally responds. Yes, she responds. Mason is skeptical of what he is hearing. He's the one who's quiet now. He starts looking around. Who organized this? What did they expect of him? This cannot be true. He stares at her again and then he realizes Mason doesn't have much time left to finish his project. I don't know who you are, but we need to talk. Don't you agree? He asks to the woman. The woman initially does not respond. Mason softly holds her wrist and asks his question again. Ultimately, the woman gives in. They arrange to meet the following day. Mason has arrived at the front desk and is asked to check out of the hotel. He needed some fresh air. He gets outdoors. He turns around and walks as fast as he can to the park. Mason arrives at the park shortly after and discovers that there is no gardener. He walked past the fountain and was now only a few minutes away from meeting the mother and her son. He moves so quickly that, despite his crutches, he almost runs. He's getting close. He walks to the seat, looks in the distance, and notices a woman and a young boy sitting on it. Is it going to be them? Was he on time? Or did he make another mistake? He checks behind him to make sure he isn't being followed, and when he sees nothing, he approaches the woman and her young son. There she was, a woman who looked exactly like his wife, and a boy on her lap who looks exactly like his son. It's the mom and child from previously. Mason can't believe he arrived on time. His disbelief lasted barely a second because they appeared disturbed. He greets them but receives no response. What was the situation? He inquires whether anything is wrong. The mother then responds, We were very concerned. We were afraid you had set us up or something because you were so late, and now you're looking worried. Are you all right, Mason? Mason is relieved to hear her concern since it confirms her sincerity and they finally unveil themselves. Mason was well aware that they were not his wife and son and had no reason to believe otherwise. On the other hand, they were involved in a collision three years ago. They had survived, but her husband and the boy's father had passed away while they were still young. 